We are live. And we're warming things up. We're getting some energy going. We're getting some friction happening. And it's a great day. And I'm excited to be here. Hi, Sam. How you doing? Um, yeah, it's a great day. And uh, I'm really excited for a lot of reasons, but mostly because uh, my doors opened for Vocal Magic today, and I'm really stoked to get some new people in and singing with me and work on a lot of things that we don't usually work on in vocal lessons. Uh, I'm definitely a different vocal teacher than you may be used to. Uh, I'm going to turn the fan off so it's not so annoying in the photo. Um, so yeah, we're talking about uh, whatever you're curious about. I'm here for questions um, because uh, it's not a normal thing that we do. Like, so I'm not just offering a normal group program where you just come on and, and sing your thing and I tell you go do this and bye and have fun. We are creating a community. We're creating a little safe cocoon for singers like you who have a good musical foundation, um, but need a little safe space, a little cocoon to feel like you can deal with the mental health and the fear and the nervous system things that come up before you go out and sing in front of the world, whatever that means to you. Even if you're not planning on being a superstar, you don't have to, even if you just want to sing karaoke with your friends, that's a great goal, but it might be scary. For you you might you know break out in a you know a nervous sweat and be drenched every time you want to go sing and first of all i need you to know that's a very normal thing and that's okay hey joe how you doing um and i think it's really important to just i talk about this all the time but number one notice what's happening in your body when you go to sing and number two accept as hard as that may be, <laughs> it's easier said than done, accept what's happening in your body when you go to sing. And the more you do it, little bits and little bits, your comfort zone starts to expand. So you start to sing in front of people um, in, for example, this little cohort style um, cocoon, safe space. I like to call it co cocoon. It's a nice word. Um, and we slowly get more comfortable in um, these spaces where you're singing for humans even though you are terrified we know it's a safe space we know it's other people um, that are feeling the same things we're feeling so we feel a little more okay with singing in front of those people and then you get done we talk about how it went we talk about what thoughts came up we talk about what body things came up um I'm, it's my pleasure i love doing these um and then we talk about, okay, so we expanded a little bit today, right? You sang in front of people. It doesn't have to be the whole world, you know, because the whole world is a scary place. There are haters out there. There are all kinds of people who will judge you and say all kinds of things. And of course, that's what our gremlin is telling us all the time, right? Doesn't mean it's true. Sometimes there are haters. Sometimes we're just imagining the haters. Um, but it is a real thing that gets into our nervous system and um, makes our nervous system act like there's a, a real threat. And so it's not your fault. But the more we do this while talking about the technique at the same time, because of course some people may need a little uh, finessing on their technique, and I, we do all of that at the same time, um, but we give ourselves evidence and data that we sang in front of a couple other people and we survived. And maybe four or five weeks later, you notice that you are not quite as sweaty <laughs> when you're starting to sing in front of somebody. You're not quite as terrified because you've been practicing this song. You know how to make the sounds that you want to make. You know how to uh, execute on your intention. And then all of a sudden you get through it and you're like, wow, I am 50% less sweaty. <laughs> My hands are not as clammy. Uh, I nailed that high note. Maybe I didn't nail every high note, but I nailed that one high note. And so we're doing this training work over time 
we're training our brain mind, our brain voice connection, which is just a straight pathway most of the time when we're speaking. Some of us have no filter <laughs> and we just say what's on our mind. And that's a really easy pathway. But for some reason, when we're singing, it becomes very convoluted in there. Somewhere between our brain and our voice, we've lost trust of ourselves or we've never trained our voice so we don't even know what it should feel like so we don't have that trust yet and either way it's okay it's okay that's you are where you are and we love that and this is why this program was created i created it because let me tell you a story so back in 2016 um i was obsessed with musicals i had just moved here uh to maui from colorado there's a great community theater program here. I auditioned for Mary Poppins and not just the show. I auditioned for the role of Mary Poppins. Huh. Talk about freaky, right? So I auditioned, I practiced for weeks, made sure I knew that I could sing these songs, practiced uh, in front of my partner. I practiced, uh, you know, I videoed myself. I like talked to my old voice coach about it. I was ready. I was prepared. And when I auditioned, I was so shaky. <laughs> I was terrified. Um, but I knew that I was going to be terrified. I knew that the shakiness was going to come up. And so I stepped onto stage, sang through the shakes, sang through the clammy hands, sang through the dry mouth that I knew was going to come up because I practiced this. I knew what my body does when it's nervous. And I went for it. Uh, long story short, after a callback and everything, which I was also nervous at. I don't think I've ever been not nervous when I'm singing in front of people, by the way. Um, I got the role. So I played Mary Poppins. Great rehearsal process. Had so much fun. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Learned so many things. Oh, my God. I learned uh, who I was during that show. Fast forward to the day before, the rehearsal before we opened put my wig on for the first time, had a panic attack, <laughs> literal full-blown panic attack. Um, I had never had a panic attack before, so I didn't know what was happening. I was just freaking out for no reason, or so I thought. And uh, I was very worried that I wasn't going to be able to do the show because it was in two days. And I had this feeling in my body that I had never experienced before. I, I've had anxiety for probably my whole life, but I had never had that level of bodily anxiety and I didn't know what was happening. And, you know, of course it's understandable looking back and people told me if, of course it's understandable. It's the first time you put your wig on and like fully embodied the weight of this character that you were about to play, which is an iconic loved by the entire world character. Of course I was feeling pressure, right? But that doesn't mean that I should not have been feeling what I was feeling because it's in your body, right? It's all this stuff, anxiety is manifested through things from your childhood, through ways you've been talked to by authority figures your whole life. It's, it's not something that you can change, especially on a dime, right? So I was having panic attack and in that moment, I was so lucky to have a director who, number one was a female, I'm not sure a male director would have, uh, treated me this way, but she took me all the way in the back, like where nobody else was and, you know, hugged me, grabbed my arms, like had my, had me grab my own arms, did a lot of the things that now I know are great for calming your nervous system, getting out of a dysregulated state. Um, she let me breathe. She let me cry it out um, because that's what I needed at the time. And after that rehearsal, I, finally, I was able to get back on stage, thank goodness. Um, other panic attacks I've had, I had to just leave wherever I was and peace out. And I'm really glad I didn't have to do that, although it would have been fine if I did. Um, thankfully, I had, you know, thankfully I had a great director who would understand that. Um, but after that, I really started to think about how the mind and the nervous system really is involved in singing. Like it's not just performing, it's whenever you open your mouth and sing in front of anybody. Like if you're a person that doesn't ever sing in front of anybody, singing for your 
your best friend can be terrifying even. And you're like, why is this the case? I love singing. Why is my body tightening up all of a sudden? Why is it stopping me from doing the thing I love to do most in the world? Well, guess what? We're human. This is what our human bodies were designed to do. This is why not everybody is a singer out in the world because it's hard shit. <laughs> it's hard to notice all these things that are happening in your body and know what to do with them. A lot of people just give up and say, nope, too scared. I'm never singing in front of anybody ever again, right? How often do you hear that from people? Oh, I would never do karaoke. Oh, you don't want to hear me sing. I would hurt your ears. That's just deflection. <laughs> it's just deflection because they have not done the work and they're not interested in doing that hard work. And that's okay. It's not for everybody. Singing is not for everybody. Just like any career is not for everybody, even if it's not your career. It's not for everybody because you really have to love it. You have to be dedicated to do this work over time, this training to help singing feel like you're not going to die when you do it in front of other people, right? Just like going to the gym, right? If you're dedicated to building muscle, you got to go every day for many months. If you go twice, nothing's going to change. Um, same with building, sorry, something's making me tear up a little in my nose. Um, yeah, you have to be dedicated to it. You have to love it. You have to really, really want it. So, so it's not, ever, not for everybody, and that's okay. Um, but this program that I've created is for the people who don't know a path forward, and they know there's lots of other layers than just doing warm-ups and exercises, right? So there's all these voice teachers out there that are like, hey, you want to hit high notes? Here, do this. Do a nya or whatever. Sure, we can do that all day. But what's going to happen next time your inner critic comes up, your gremlin comes up and goes, you're, you're terrible, right? You need to sing for uh, 800 more hours and practice before you sing in front of anybody. What's going to happen to that exercise that you did, that technique work that you did? It's going to be in the trash, right? Because your gremlin takes over and you haven't learned how to work with that voice on the inside, right? So we are working with yourself as a whole human instead of just a voice machine, right? Because you're not just a voice machine. You are a human with fears and anxiety and uh, chemical balances that are different from everybody else. You have a different actual machine than everybody else. If you're trying to sing an Adele song and you don't have the same machine as Adele, which nobody does, P.S., uh, it's going to be you're putting yourself into a very tiny box and that's going to be very overwhelming for your nervous system, for your, for your gremlin, for everything on the inside, right? Even if you learn how to do the technique that Adele can do, uh, if you have these things keep coming up, you're not going to be able to sustainably continue to sing like Adele. Hopefully this makes sense. Um, so this is why I created this program, is to have a little cocoon to hang out in and to practice these moments, these imperfect moments where we sing and we get evidence how our body reacts to, to know what's happening inside, right? Because if we never do it, then we'll never know how it's going to react. And we become so aware of our body and what it's doing that it just becomes a boring thing, right? Just like having blue eyes, right? I know that when I look in the mirror, I'm going to see blue eyes. Just like I know that when I sing in front of people, my gremlin's going to come in and start saying, you're not good enough. It's just a fact of life. You're never going to be able to change that by ignoring it, by resisting it, by saying, no, I don't want to do that anymore. Because it's a part of your body. It's a part of your nervous system. It's how you're programmed from a very young age. And we can't change those things. However, we can train ourselves, our body, and our mind to work through these things over time. So while you are working on your vocal technique, which we do inside Vocal Magic, we do all the vocal technique, but not before we address your mind and your nervous system and your patterns. This It's month one and a half of the program. We are getting to know your patterns because it is the most important thing. While we are learning breathing, we're also learning who our gremlin is and what it says and how to notice it and how to 
get out of that space, how to give yourself some gremlin free time in the world um, while you're thinking, because if you don't have that, you're always going to be drenched in sweat. You're never going to be able to train your nervous system to see singing as a different thing, you know? So this is why vocal magic is a thing and why I believe in it so much because I have done the same thing. So after my panic attack, right before I played Mary Poppins, I, uh, I mean, there was a lot of other things going on in my life, <laughs> let's be honest, but that's around the time when I started going to therapy. Um, and I started learning about my own mind, learning that I actually have diagnosable anxiety, learning that I actually, uh, cannot change the reasons why I have anxiety, but I can change how I approach it and how I perceive my own anxiety. And as a singer, it's a whole different ball game, right? Just your regular therapist doesn't really get it if they're not a performer also. And so I'm not a therapist, but I am a performer. I'm a singer. I know the things that go through our heads when you are an anxious performer, when you are an overthinker performer, when you are a perfectionist performer, when you're dealing with these things in regular life, it there's ways around it. But when you're a performer, you are met head on with these really, really big roadblocks. And we have to learn how to climb over them, how to work with them in order to do the thing that we do. Because what we do is very emotionally vulnerable. And if we're just stepping over our emotions, they're just gonna be push down, 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 further and further, and they're going to come out on you in the wrong way. Just like anxiety does when you don't have it diagnosed, when you just ignore it, when you resist the way you are, you push it down and it comes out in big bursts in ways that that uh, are not comfortable. <laughs> Let's just say that it comes out in a panic attack. Um, so we're learning all these things. We're getting really in touch with our voice mechanically, mentally, physically, nervous system, spiritually. We do a little bit of spiritual stuff in there because we are spiritual beings as well. Even if you don't consider yourself, uh, I don't know if you consider yourself an atheist or whatever, we're not, we're not diving into religion. <laughs> we're just tapping into what makes us tick as humans. Because singing is, I always believe that singing is connecting your soul to the outside, right? You're like sending a camera down your mouth into your soul and letting it out for all the world to see and to hear. And that's a very vulnerable thing. And no wonder your nervous system takes that as a threat, right? You're sharing your soul with the outside world, putting it in people's hands and saying, here's me, here's the deepest parts of me. Don't hate me. <laughs> so a lot of this work is getting to a place where you can say, here, this is this is me, this is the deepest parts of me, do with it what you will. Instead of, if you hate me, I will take that personally and um, it will mean that I'm worth less as, as a person, as a singer, you know? And that is a, where a lot of us start from. I still deal with that constantly. I have been a people pleaser most of my life, recovering codependent. Uh, and it takes lots of practice. It takes lots of boundary putting. It takes lots of self-love. It takes, and self-love comes from self-knowledge, right? Uh, a lot of this is just taking the weight off of ourselves and saying, I don't have to be perfect in every moment. And it's building the muscle of putting out your imperfect self into the world. Um, I don't want to spoil too much, but in Vocal Magic, there's uh, the whole last half of the program is building up that imperfect muscle, right? We do a challenge where uh, we post ourselves singing every day and fully aware that this might make people not sign up for the program and that's okay. Um, but I think it's a very, very important part. I've been told many times by past students that it is the most transformative part of the program. You don't have to like post on Instagram if you don't want to. You can post in our little group, it's fine. Um, but putting your voice out there for the imperfection to just be what it is and to not disclaim anything, not put any self judgment on them, just be like, this is my voice. It's imperfect. Here it is. I'm 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 willing to share it, even though you might be terrified of what people will say, of what might happen. We build that imperfection muscle and slowly but surely, 
it starts to become not a thing anymore. It may still be a little thing, but it's way less of a thing after 60, 60 days of sharing yourself, sharing your imperfect voice, however it is right now. It's less of a thing. Um, so yeah, there's also performances involved, um, not for the public, but for people that you invite and that you trust. Uh, it's another level of taking your step outside of your cocoon, outside of your comfort zone, right? So you are singing for in a performance setting um, because the only way to get better at performing in front of more people is to perform in front of a little more people. Um, and so we do two performances during the program, one halfway through and one at the end. And it's super fun. And sure, you might be very nervous, but this is what we're working on. We're working on putting ourselves, our nervous self, our uh, imperfect self out in the world, no matter what we're feeling with the preparation and all the tools to be able to uh, take care of ourselves, our body and our nervous system before we go out and sing in front of people, before we go out and do that scary thing, um, giving ourselves the tools and the environment to be a little less scared because we've been doing the work for six friggin' months to become a little more, um, a little more loving of ourselves. You know, because when you're not getting down on yourself, you're not judging yourself, that gremlin doesn't get to come in. When you are separating yourself from the gremlin, you're able to have time where you just allow yourself to be, you allow your voice to be. When you allow your voice to be what it is, you don't get in the way and cut off notes. You don't cut off your sound. And this is the whole principle behind all of what I do is when we get out of the freaking way, and we let our voice be what it is while working on technique at the same time, while working on our mental health at the same time, while working on our nervous system training at the same time, while working on our brain training at the same time, doing exercises, all the stuff we need to do, we grow and we grow quickly. It is shocking how fast my vocal magic students have grown and how much of it sticks at the end, how unafraid they are of singing in front of other people when at the beginning of the program, they could not sing in front of me without being terrified. It is amazing how fast these people have grown inside this program. So I'm not just saying that because it's my program, I'm saying it because I have real evidence. Uh, you can watch their videos on my website, um, yeah. It's pretty amazing what we can do if we, it's it's holistic, right? If you um, have ever been to see a holistic doctor or anything, they take care of your whole body. They don't just look at the, the symptom and say, this will fix your symptom, but then don't go back to the cause. So this is what we're doing here. We're holistic singing. We're a whole people, a whole you. And so we are getting down to all of the parts of you that contribute to your beautiful voice. And then we are allowing. We're learning how to get out of the way, which sometimes takes a long time because we build habits, especially as adults, 30 years for some of us, many more decades of building habits, they get solidified. If you ever tried to break a habit, you know how nasty that sucker is to let go of. So we're letting go of habits. We're taking away all the layers of saran wrap of protective tissue we've put around our voice. And I mean that in a metaphorical sense, um, because all of this is self-preservation, right? We force, we over manipulate, we over sing, we over uh, extend our voice because we're trying to sound better and we're trying to not get kicked out of the group. It's all just comes down to biology. And uh, that's, we're really just little, little beings um, trying to fit in. You know, that's what it is for me anyway. It may not be that, that for you, but um, yeah, that's where it all comes from is your biology. And so we're just learning how to see our biology clearer and how it affects our actual singing voice, how it affects our actual mechanism. And then we're learning how to get out of the way, which is easier said than done. <laughs> I can say that in two steps all day long, but it's not two steps. It's many steps. Um, and in the program, I like to frame it in um, five elements, which is really, it feels so right because at the beginning we're grounding. We're being becoming aware of our environment, becoming aware of ourself and our mind and our nervous system and our, 
our patterns. Then we go into the air module and we're learning how to fill ourselves up with air in the correct way. We're learning how to trust our breath. We're learning how to get rid of bad habits there. Then we move into the space module and we're learning how to create space in different parts of our body, whether it's in your lungs or whether it's uh, in your muscles or in your throat or in your uh, mouth, the shapes and the space um, in here in your pharynx all along this pathway changes how you sing and can make it easier, uh, can give you more tools to play with. It's really super awesome. Uh, I get really excited about talking about this stuff. Um, and then fourth module is water. So we're learning how to be in the flow. And then fifth module is fire. So we're learning riffs and runs and all the fancy stuff that makes you sound like a pro. And by that time, we are so good at allowing that we just allow the natural fire, the pure, incredible uniqueness of your voice to shine through. And that's what the fire is all about. So yeah, I'm pretty proud of this dang program. Really excited to be going into the second year of it. And I uh, can't wait to see you in there. Um, if you've looked into it before, I promise it's different. Um, it will be a little more affordable, a little more flexible uh, if time was a thing for you. So go check out, um, it's where you think it is. There's a whole page explaining everything that it is. And if it's for you, you can, decide that there. Or if you're not sure, you can just book a call with me. There's 800 buttons on there. They all lead to booking a call with me um, because that's how you apply. There's a little questionnaire you'll fill out and then we'll have a little call and we'll talk and I'll hear your voice. And we talk about if this program is right for you, if um, if it's really going to be the thing that helps you get to where you want to go. Um, Because some people, it's not, and that's fine. And it's all good. So I just want to talk to you um, just to make sure we have the right people in the program and um, that the program is doing you justice um, based on where you are in your vocal growth. Um, so yeah, that's the thing. If you uh, want to just comment here, you can comment magic and I'll send you all the links that you need and um, we can have a little private conversation about uh, any questions that you might have. I'm here for you. I got lots of time. Um, yeah, if you have any friends that you think this would be good for, if you have any friends that are secret singers as well um, that love to sing and you know have have uh, a joy and a passion for it but they are maybe too scared to sing in front of other people this is who this program is for um, even if you are singing in front of people already and you want to um, find what's stopping you from singing on bigger stages with more freedom this is also for you it's not just for beginning uh, singers it's for anybody who wants to feel more trust in their voice and more freedom in their voice so i have people anywhere from weekly singers at church like this is the star of their church band all the way down to people who uh, have never sung in front of anybody like even themselves they don't sing in front of themselves um yeah it's a it's helped a lot of different kinds of singers and it's pretty cool i have people who were too scared to sing in front of me and uh <coughs> Then they got to a point where they're going out and busking on the street. No problem. Practically zero fear. Of course, there's a little nervous, but um, yeah, they said it's it's such a different world. Once they know themselves and they know their mind and they know their nervous system and they know all the patterns that are going to come up and they sing through all that stuff. They sing with all that stuff. They sing not in spite of their anxiety. They sing with their anxiety. It's the coolest thing. I love it so much. How would the group be for a total beginner? beginner? Um, honestly, most people are not as beginner as they think they are. If you can carry a general tune, it's probably fine. Honestly, it's probably it, it'll probably be okay. If you don't feel comfortable in a group yet, it's all good. It's it's not a requirement. Like if you want a little runway of private lessons before you get into the group, so you can really dive into the technique and um, just have lots and lots of one-on-one -on -one time with me before you even get into the group. That's totally fine too. I've had people do that. Um, I've had people who have been my student for like a year already, then come into the program and still learn a whole lot. Um, I've had people who just come in uh, never having worked with me before, and then they they do some private lessons after the fact. It's all it's all good. Um, yeah, like I said, I've had people who who struggle with pitch 
make it all the way through the program just fine. We're learning all the same things together. It's just how you apply it to yourself. And that's what I'm here for, to help you learn how to apply it to what you're doing. But of course, it's up to you. Um, if seeing in, in front of people with uh, more freedom and more trust is a thing that you want to work towards, this is what this program is built for. Um, but we also do very similar stuff in private lessons. It's just um, you don't get the practice singing in front of other people. You don't get the performance practice because um, it's just uni, you know. Hopefully that helps. Um, but I think you're. I think you you have a handle on what you want to do. I have a, I have a hunch. Um, so don't don't second guess yourself too much. You know, take a take a think about it. But um, yeah, just trust your yourself and what you feel is best for you. Um, but it's here when you want it. Um, I usually like to do two of these, open up two a year. Last year I did three because I did um, one at the very beginning of the year as like a um, beta version. And now I'm planning on doing at least two a year. If this launch goes well and there's still a bunch more people who want in, maybe I'll start another one in like June. We'll see. Um, but theoretically, September-ish will be the next time I I start this this program. So that's another thing to think about. Um, yeah, I think I covered everything, how I got here. And if you have any other questions, I'm here for you. If you're watching the replay of this, thank you. Uh, comment magic if you're curious. Um, uh, my DMs are open. Um, this uh, cohort will be starting the third, I think it's the third week of March, so like the 13th week. Um, Theoretically working towards Thursdays at like 7.30 p.m. Eastern. Um, but that is not decided yet because, of course, everybody in the group needs to be able to show up. So um, you still have a couple of weeks. I'm going to leave the doors open until the 10th or the 12th or so. And um, if you're curious, um, go check out the website. If you're curious, comment magic and I will have a conversation with you about um, whether you feel this is right for you or not um share it with your friends send them over to me i'm here uh yeah I, my goal is just to help as many people as i can know themselves better as singers and feel like singing is not such a scary weighty thing it can be fun it can be easy it can be it can be freer once you know yourself knowledge is power as they say I, I think that knowledge is knowledge is of many things. It's it's helpful, and uh, what we do is we just get to know your voice and mind together. So um, thanks for being here and for sticking around. If you're curious, I'm here. Um, the information page is um, up there, and uh, the way to do it, the way to apply is just book a call with me. Yeah. Once you get there, you'll see a calendar and you pick a date that's right for you. And when you say book, then it will give you a bunch of questions to answer. Not a bunch, it's like five questions. Um, and then they'll let me know a little more about you and why you're here. And then we'll meet and then um, we'll chat and we'll sing. And uh, then we'll get started pretty soon. I'm so excited to start in a couple of weeks. It's a really exciting time whenever I launch because I never know who's going to show up. And it's always the right people. And it's always magical. So um, I'm excited to do the work with you. And uh, thanks for hanging out. And have a lovely rest of your Tuesday. And I'll see you soon. Do, do, do.